my channel this is your friend Amelia Boy and if you're new to my channel please make sure to click the subscribe button below and hit the notification bell above so you will be updated for our upcoming videos today is November 5 2020 29 years ago a flash flood took place in Ormoc City basically what we are trying to do right now is we are commemorating Ormoc City is commemorating the flash flood that took place way back November 5, 1991. All right, yes. So what we're going to do right now is a sort of reaction video looking back the past of Ormoc City and the culture, the history of Ormoc City, the flash flood that took place and the Yolanda as well that took place sometime in November of, I'm not quite sure, when was the date, but I'll put the, the date there. But what I'm sure of today is, today is the commemoration day of Ormoc City flash flood that took place in 1991, and that also left Ormoc City with 6,000 plus dead people. This video that I'm doing some sort of reaction, um, commemorating Ormoc, uh, remembering what happened, and uh, tracing back uh, Ormoc City was a video courtesy of Ormoc City local government, headed by the city mayor, Richard Gomez. All right, so without further ado, let's kind of go ahead and play the video. Again, this video is courtesy of the city government of Ormoc City. Let's play. So, in the western part of the this island is of how Lake, Ormoc City looks like enough to sustain a settlement of several it's families very green, right? blessed with rich and fertile soils where the natives toiled over producing various bountiful harvests. Yeah, it's very this green was then called Ugmok. So it was named this Ugmok. Early civilization. This small yet productive village and had a well developed and lucrative so system of Ormoc living. City. When the Spanish explorers arrived, changes began to happen through the years. One of these changes was the conversion of the many natives into Christianity mm -hmm. when the Jesuits arrived in May 1597. So, in 1605, well. Moro pirates from different tribal groups in Mindanao pillaged and harassed the humble Christian settlement. Mm -hmm. When the Jesuits went home in 1768, the Augustinians took over the missions in Leyte and Ugmok became a visita under the parish of Palompon. Oh, okay. So Ormoc was still, years. I guess uh, when I was still young, Ormoc City was still Ugmok part of uh, Archdiocese of Palompon. So I guess Karen, it was changed already. When the coming of Spanish conquistadores as well as the migration of people from neighboring towns, the name Ormoc was born mm. from the original Ormoc. Ormoc. For a span of three Ormoc decades during the end Ormoc. of the 19th century, <laughs> commercial agriculture continued to expand in Leyte. Abaca or hemp was its yeah, main export Abaca, in one the, of the 70s. Um, Ormoc was a huge contributor in this trade. Through this Products, period, um, for important infrastructures were built. I still the can recall you uh, grandparents doing the abaca cross to the shore of Candolong. Another bridge which still oh. exists to this day. This is the, the Tulay. Ah, the Tulay part of the Shetawatsiya. Segundo Esmero. During the late 1800s, Ormoc was also a part of the revolutionaries seeking independence from Spanish rule. The rise of Faustino Ablen, a fabled revolutionary leader, inspired locals to join the Pulahan movement. Mm. In a twist of events, Faustino's Shepala. daughter Rosa later married a Spaniard, Don Felipe Larazabal. Yeah, that's a story the Larazabal of, family uh, later become prominent in the Larazabal in Ormoc. After World well, War Ormoc II. is known of the golden age of Ormoc started in the prominent in Ormoc. As you can see, started by the Don Sa, no, family. Don Sa, period, Frot Nam and Frot Area Nam, Frot Area. And there's a big hotel named Don Philippe 
from a baka to Don sugar, Philly. yes, gas, that's the Don Philly Philly sugar Philly. company or Osco Sugar Mill was oh. built in Ipil in 1919. Oh, Ormoc City was I mean, a witness the to the deadliest aerial and naval battles ever fought during World War II. The last stand of the Japanese invaders occurred in Ormoc, and the it's war officially to ended the in December 10, 10 because I grew up when the invaders uh, finally in surrendered to the Allied forces. Although the damage was severe, the city was able to quickly recover amidst burning houses, no. phosphorus shots, and immense amounts um, of rubble and ruin. With this continuous progress, Ormoc was proclaimed a city on September 4, 1947 by the first president of the Republic of the Philippines, mm -hmm. Manuel A. Rojas. Shortly after, by virtue of Presidential Proclamation No. 42, Ormoc was formally inaugurated as a city on October 20, 1947. So it Ormoc was on a steady rise. However, on November 5, 1991, so it was typhoon Ormoc spawned a flash flood ravaging the entire city and oh, brought about yeah. massive destruction and death, claiming around so 8,000 lost death. lives. Also appeared lost, but with the aid of several humanitarian organizations, Ormoc struggled to get back up. Yeah, the Japan that's International the Anilo Agency, River. or JICA, assisted the Japan mitigation project, which would ultimately protect the city from another destructive flood while helping boost the local economy. The city was on the rise due to its strategic location as the gateway of nice. Eastern Visayas, allowing for rapid financial and economic growth. Ormoc was also a vital contributor to overcoming the national power mm. crisis in the mid-90s mm. as it is the site of the world's second yes, largest geothermal geothermal which paved the way That's for the nations to create, build, operate, transfer schemes with the so government. That's the city's city tribulations so were far from over. On November 8, 2013, oh, okay, that was a super typhoon so, Yolanda, Haiyan, the city. Again, the destruction was massive, but the Ormocanons remained silent and strong. The Ormocanons banded together while yeah, patiently Nicole. waiting for outside help. Recovery was rapid, That's and we showed the world that we are ever enduring and spirited even during dire and hard times. Just three years after the devastation, Ormoc City is displaying wow. steady progress and stability. From a small town with dirt roads and cobbled streets in the 1940s, Ormoc is now an expanding concrete jungle and home to flourishing businesses, this and institutions, um, or famine, government officials, and Ormoc prosper. City. Ormoc will forever be a city of beautiful yeah, people. Have it. Thank you too. Um, Mayor Richard Gomez and Congresswoman Lucy Torres Gomez. There you have it, guys. All right, so that's a look back of Ormoc City history and also what happened in Ormoc. Yes, what happened in Ormoc way back November of 1991. Um, I would say very so blessed. Um, you know what, that Anila River earlier, you know, what I, I told you, my grandparents' house. Actually, my father's house, yeah, grandparents' house, uh, is alongside Don's River. We were in Bohol during the time because Don was my father in Tagbilaran City. So my entire family, uh, my two titos, my town, were in Bohol during the time. We were left sa bahay namin or bahay ng lolo ko Don sa Ormoc City were my tita, tita Mini. Uh, her family, uh, si Manoy Boy, which is the eldest nila papa, saka si, si tatay, our grandfather was left there as well as Oromok City. They were lucky enough during that time because when that uh, typhoon Orin took place, they were able to skate, not really skate, skate, they were able to uh, move over to a big house. Kasi ganito yun, uh, yung, ito yung, ito yung, uh, the River. So this portion here is not yung bahay talaga namin. It's just there. Pag, uh, pag, pag makikita mo, pag labas ng bahay mo, ikot ng bahay namin is really the river. So yan yung setup namin before. So nung nag-overflow na yung water, ito na napansin na nila na the water sa Anilang River is parang tumaas na. They were pre they prepared to run over doon sa isang malaking bahay na isang malaking bahay doon sa may along the highway. The good thing there is yung malaking bahay is 
um, it was being protected by the wall ng Aboites Warehouse. Yung Aboites Warehouse, kasi malaking, malaking Aboites Warehouse dun. So, the wall itself, so ito yung, ito yung parang firewall ng Aboites Warehouse, yung firewall ng Aboites Warehouse. Uh, yun yung nagprotect ng bahay na kung saan yung grandparent ko, yung lolo ko, yung kita ko tito, and other people who were there, doon sa nag-move in. So that bahay kasi is mataas eh. And then it was protected by the firewall ng aboytes na mataas din. So luckily enough, and um, God's blessing, hindi sila walang nasaktan, walang kasulti sa family namin, and neighboring um friends namin kasi doon sa naka-evacuate sa big house na yun ang may firewall ng Aboites. Kasi kung wala pa yung firewall ng Aboites, I guess, um, I, I don't know kung saan sila hahanapin yung, yung, yung family or yung relatives ko. Kasi nandun kasi talaga sa, ano eh, sa, sa Anila River, like near talaga sa river. And that yung daloy ng water is very strong. Yung current talaga, sabi ng tita ko, tito ko, um, it was really strong yung car. So, again, that's something that we, we, we were thankful that took place. Even though, it, you know, it was an incident, incident na we should not be thankful, but we were thankful kasi my grandparent, my tita, my tito, and some of our uh, friends namin doon were able to escape and survive during the tragic incident that happened. In our life. And well, as you can see from the video, our work really started like in a small municipality, eventually grew and developed, and right now it's very, very developed now. You can see Kaisano Mall, you have Robinson's Mall, you also have SM City Mall. The city itself is not progressive and we owe this progress of Mok City because of the current government right now, which is managed or which is headed by Mayor Richard Gomez and Congresswoman Mositores. Thank you so much for taking care of my beloved, our beloved Ormok City. Alright, so, well, I, I guess that would be it for me. Uh, again, I'm doing this, this some sort of video looking back at the history of Ormok because today is a commemoration of Ormok City flash flood, which is every November 5. Right now, yung Ormok, yung mga Taos Ormok na commemorate. I'm not sure if what activity, but normally, pag walang pandemic, and uh, there will be always a mass na sinasagawa doon sa mass grave in Ormok City. Well, thank you so much guys for joining today. I hope you do like this video of mine, this vlog. Again, please make sure to subscribe. Click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell about so you will not miss any single updates on our upcoming videos. This has been your friend, Mr. Boy. Bye!